Today we wanted to talk to you about protein and your kidneys. Oh, it's fasting day. Oh yes, it's fat, no food. No yeah. food to show you, so it's fasting day. But we want to talk to you about protein in your kidneys. And um, most Americans who eat the standard American diet are stressing their kidneys. Um, their kidneys are, are being stressed by, by the standard American diet. Good morning, Carol. Morning, Carol. Ah, she's seeing, she's going to try and catch more than one of us at one live this week. Awesome. We like it when you watch it in review, too. Right. So, you didn't turn your ringer on. No, I'll just let it go. It's all right. Yeah. Um, we'll ignore Russ's phone. Right. Um, but if you're eating the standard American diet, you are likely stressing your kidneys. And it is known that once you're diagnosed with kidney disease, one of the first things they do is try to put you on a low protein diet because they know that protein stresses your kidneys. Mm -hmm. Which is, on a side note, very uh, interesting to me considering how much protein I, protein I thought I needed when I was bodybuilding, mm -hmm. which was not true. And so, and, and I think I've said this before, I was doing more damage with all that excess protein and it would have been easier for me to get down to the weight I needed to be when I was competing. If you were I, eating high I, carbs. Right, high carbs and low pro, lower protein. Right. So one in eight Americans have kidney disease and 25% of them don't even know it. So it's uh, definitely a problem. And yes, table sugar and high volumes of table, sh table sugar, table sugar. sugar, I can talk, do cause stress on your kidneys, absolutely. But the amount of animal protein that, that we eat in the standard American diet creates a high acid load. And if you think about it, protein is made up of amino acids. That's what, what it is, it's amino acids. And so when you eat a lot of animal protein, it increases the acid in your system and your kidneys go into what's called hyperfiltration mode. Now, your body is meant to be able to do that for when, you know, back in the day when we were scavenging and you came across protein and you were able to take in a lot of animal protein on a, you know, not super regular basis, but periodically, your body could go into this hyperfiltration mode, um, use the protein, address the acid, and everything was fine. That's the body adapting to survival. It's right. using what you have to survive. But our body was never meant to stay in that hyperfiltration mode uh, continuously. It's much like we talk about stress. Your body is designed to manage stress, but if you're chronically stressed, it creates a problem on, on your system. The same with constant protein intake and your kidneys constantly having to be in hyperfiltration mode. It stresses them, it scars them, and it, and it creates um, a problem of having the sustained excess uh, protein in your system. Interestingly though, the same amount of plant protein does not cause the same stress on your kidneys. They've done studies that show if you eat beef or eggs or dairy or fish, fish or yeah. whatever, it causes this spike in, in stress. But if you eat the same amount of protein but from plants, it doesn't cause that spike mm -hmm. in stress. You don't go into hyper. But I know one particular study they looked at compared soy protein with milk right. protein. Exactly, and they didn't. They saw it with the milk, but the same amount of soy didn't cause the stress. Mm -hmm. So that that's interesting. Additionally, once your kidneys are damaged and have the scarring, they do what's called leaking protein, which means they're not filtering the protein out, and it leaks into um, into your. Urine. urine. Right. I had to think, where does it yeah. go? It leaks into your, pro into your urine. And you've probably heard that, you know, people with diabetes who have damage to their kidneys, one of the side effects is protein in the urine. And they've discovered that that leakage, that um, unable to fil filter the protein out, is caused by inflammation. So what you can do is you can continue to eat your high level of animal protein and you can take a strong anti-inflammatory drug and it stops the leakage. Obviously, that's not what we would recommend. That's not what we because recommend. Because instead, what you can do is you can actually turn leaking off by eating uh, plant protein instead of animal protein. So it actually stops the protein leakage because it stops the stress and it reduces the inflammation. We've talked a lot about how animal protein in general causes inflammation in the system, and it does exactly the same thing to your kidneys. So you can stop the... Um, the inflammation and therefore stop the protein leakage by not intaking animal protein. Right. And it even talks into once you've got into uh, uh, kidney failure, kidney failure or something like that, you can actually turn it on and off. The protein leakage, the, yeah. Pro with plant protein. I mean, right. they actually done a study where it actually shows them turning it on and off, switching between, I guess, plant protein and animal protein. Mm -hmm. yep. So, you know, I mean, 
food for thought, folks. I mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, and the interesting thing is, you know, why do they wait until the, the kidneys are already scarred, they're already damaged, to tell people, oh, you should probably take in less animal protein? Like, if you if they know that animal protein causes scarring of the kidneys and, and, and will lead to um, the hyperfiltration, will lead to inflammation, that leads to protein leakage, that leads to kidney damage and kidney failure, why don't they just say, like, why, why isn't it common knowledge to say, hey, don't take in so much animal protein, it's hard on the system. Right. That's the thing that's weird for me. And the other thing to keep in mind is the odds are against us. I mean, one in eight people that they assume right now have some form of kidney disease. And 25% don't know it. And 25% don't know it. The thing that's interesting it. to me is, is that number because of the standard American diet and the amount of animal protein that we in general ingest? Yeah, I mean, the, what we were seeing there was that they basically said the Western diet, standard American diet, and they named a whole bunch of they other ones. They call it the sweet meat diet. Right, or right. The meat sweet basically, diet. all those diets are causing kidney failures to some degree. Yeah. So, um, so moving toward the whole food muscle way of eating, you know, 80% um, plant-based is going to really, really help your kidneys. Hey, Deborah, good morning. Morning, Deborah. What's Laura saying? Sad, but incredible how humans hold on to habits. Yeah, exactly. And, and how their search for instant gratification and happiness. Right. Yeah, it, it is interesting how they don't, they don't think, well, and a lot of them don't know, like they don't realize that the way that they eat is, is so damaging to their body. And if they've been told, they kind of block it out right and and we've talked about this everybody wants instant gratification quick and easy access um food the way you nourish yourself should not be something that is inconvenient that is something that you try to do we've talked and about we, it a lot and we stress that in the whole food muscle club and a whole food muscle way is that you got to take time to nourish yourself to feed yourself and do that proper you know by taking in a lot of plant foods and minimizing your animal products I mean, we eliminate them. That's the, that's the level that we took it to. We don't use animal products at all. Um, but to get to 80%, 85, 90, just keep trying to move in that right direction. Uh, you know. It's gonna make a difference. Right. So JoLynn's asking for some good examples of plant-based proteins. Um, sure. We can absolutely do that. First of all, all plants have protein in them. The only plant that doesn't have protein in it is mistletoe. It's not edible by humans anyway, so that's not a problem. Right. Um, but all plants have protein. But if you're looking for your higher protein plant options, any legumes are going to be great for you, which are your beans and your lentils. Um, green peas are 26% protein, I believe. They're, they're very high protein. Green peas are very good for you. Mm. Incidentally, you really should be eating beans every day. Beans I mean, the phenomenal. benefits of eating beans yeah. are, are phenomenal. So find a way to get yourself at least a serving of beans every single day, and you'll be doing yourself a, a great job. And that's why we keep hummus in the house. I make hummus on a consistent basis. We eat it on, on Russ's rustic bread. Mm -hmm. That is, The recipe is on the recipe page uh, available for free. You don't even have to be a member. Um, my hummus recipe is available to members of the Whole Food Muscle Club at rnrjourney.com. Mm -hmm. So that's on there. So beans are a great option. Um, Nuts. Nuts. Seeds. Absolutely. Seeds are really good. If you think about what beans and nuts and seeds are, it is the plant taking everything that they have, all of the energy, all of their DNA, everything that they have, and saying, I'm passing this on to make the next generation happen. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things are going to have great protein in them. Another one uh, is grains, because grains are the same thing, right? They're the seed of a, of a plant, basically. Um, quinoa is very high in protein. It, it, it's a complete protein, actually, quinoa. So it's a, Not that that matters here no, or there, it's but just, some but people it, but care. But it's a great, it's a really, it's a superfood, basically. Um, I always recommend for people, if they're looking to add protein uh, to their diet, take the dishes that they make that have rice in them and instead use a different grain. Use one that, ha you know, like quinoa is a great one, uh, farro is another right. and, and one, vulgar. And as, as part of the Whole Food Muscle Club, you get access to the recipes that we keep adding to. And, and if you keep in mind, each one of those recipes has protein in mind because being an ex-bodybuilder, weightlifter, that I'm always looking to see, making sure I'm getting some kind of protein. He thinks about it. I don't. I just right, put she food doesn't. in there. <laughs> but so everything on there is going to is going to give you a source of protein, mm -hmm. um, as well as carbohydrates, as well as some level of fats that you need. Um, you know, just keep in mind that eliminating fats is not healthy either. You can't eliminate any nutrient. So you got to make sure you're getting them correctly so your body can utilize them. And, and it happens if you just eat plants. You end yeah. up with about 80% carbs, give or take, and then 10% protein and 10% fat, which is exactly well, the balance that. your body needs. So yeah. it works out really, really well. Hey, Orlando, it's nice to see you this hey, morning. Hey, Orlando, morning. Um, so yeah, basically the bottom line is animal proteins do stress your kidneys. 
And if you switch to eating more plant protein, um, you're going to be better off on that front. If you are, um, if you're at 80%, you're um, plant-based, you're doing really well because then your body only goes into that hyperfiltration mode when you do ingest animal pro mm -hmm. protein, which at 80% is about four times a week, give or take, right. if my math is right. Yeah. 